back to our Faith Forward platform. I'm John Ackerman. With me as always... Ryan Bales. Uh, and we have an opportunity again every time that we gather together to talk about what we engaged on Sunday through Scripture at Christian Fellowship Church here in Ashburn, Virginia. If you're wondering where we are and you're watching this audio <laughs> video cast or listening to this podcast, Ashburn, Virginia, Christian Fellowship Church, we engaged what we did on Sunday, not for the purpose of just knowing more, mm -hmm. but actually the name of the podcast, taking the faith that we've learned and yep. taking it and moving it forward into every part of our life. That's the goal, at least. That's the goal, right? Sometimes we do better than others. Well, hope today's a good day. Yeah, hope today's a good day. That's right. I got my mug of, of water, actually, <laughs> right here. Too late in the day for coffee. That's right. Is it ever too late in the day for coffee? Yes, it is for me. I've reached that age where it's a really like it's 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 a it's you don't know what's going to happen. I could be up to three a.m. or I could be fine, <laughs> and I'm not willing to take that risk anymore. Because no matter how late I stay up anymore, I still got to get up at the same time. Right. So yeah. uh, once again, sign of aging, right? What you're going to do? I don't even drink coffee. So there you go. You got that one. Coffee. I'll drink it for you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Just I'm not here, right now. I'm here to serve, which we'll tie into Good. today, right? How's Just that for a second? Throw that one up. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So if you caught the message this Sunday, um, Pastor Brian's message is coming from Mark chapter 9. And we're talking about this conversation that Jesus has with his disciples. That's right. That Jesus sort of invites himself into mm -hmm. with his disciples as they're trying to figure out sort of where all this is going to end up for them. They've put in the time with Jesus. They've made some significant sacrifices for right. Jesus. And they're they're wondering about the payout. Yeah, yeah. There's some moments, right? And Jesus does this thing I mentioned uh, this morning about this idea where Jesus engages them, even though it is clear contextually that Jesus knew what they're talking about, mm -hmm. right? We don't know if it's because the Holy Spirit told him, because everything we know that was miraculous, it came from the Holy Spirit. He showed us that example. We've talked about that in the series. We'll get into that maybe some more another time. Or just because he overheard them. We don't know. But kind of like, you know, a parent or my mom specifically used to go, hey, what were you talking about? And there were times where that is a completely rhetorical question. It was yeah. actually an invitation for conversation. So he, through a question, he invites him into this conversation. Yeah. And so where we get to with this is the disciples are actually kind of wondering, does this all pay off? For sure. Me? Right. Yeah. And where Jesus sort of redirects it is redefining what service looks like. Mm hmm. Right, what they're being called to do in this world. Yeah. Without, like you said, without criticizing them. Mm -hmm. And so we want to get to two things today. We want to talk a little bit about service. Yeah. And then we want to talk a little bit about the payoff. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about both of those. And and again, it'll it'll begin to help us think a little bit that sometimes what's occurred in our life is we're exposed to things one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And if we aren't exposed to them through scripture, we allow things outside of Scripture, maybe even well-intentioned things, mm -hmm. to define how we engage Scripture. And especially around service and what really, we'll talk about in just a moment, what really makes an individual great. Mm -hmm. right? For some people out there who are like, oh, people can't be great. This is going to be a, a moment for them, right? <laughs> It'll be a moment for them. I know this, it would have been a moment for me years ago, too. Absolutely. Uh, in that way, because I was much more comfortable with thinking myself as the worm than I yeah. was that God can look at me and see me and have a sense of greatness. Yeah. Yeah. So now that we've teed that one up, we're actually going to hit pause on that part of the conversation. Yeah, I wanted the whole teaser. That, right? yeah. Sometimes you got to do that. Let me you know do. You do. Um, we want to start with first just the idea of service in general, because we know that we are all called to serve. And yep. I think sometimes that word has just become so broad as to lack direction or specificity or some sense of what is it that I'm supposed to be doing. And so when we talk about serve, mm -hmm. we're really just talking about go and be Jesus yes. to the people around you. However you are called to do that, however you're gifted to do that, however you're wired to do that, however you're passionate about doing that, mm -hmm. go and be Jesus. Go and represent Jesus. Go yeah. and present Jesus again. Yeah. Can, I do a little, can I do a little cross-platform promotion right now? Please. Because there's some people who may be hearing this say, okay, you're going to tell me go and serve and I'm going to be with you. But my challenge is, is not that I know I'm not supposed to go and serve. I don't know how I'm best wired to yep. serve. So we actually have something here at Christian Fellowship Church we do. called Square One. We have a class going on right now. You can't join. I'm sorry. It's full. But we have another one starting on Sunday, the 11th of April, yep. the Sunday after Easter. It'll will it be in the, the 11 o'clock hour. It will. At 11 o'clock hour. You can join virtually or you can uh, come in person. And it's really to help us, again, flesh out not just serving, but how we best serve. Yep. Because sometimes... 
I think we could get in this. All right, we're going to hear God say, serve, 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 and we're going to get in, and we are going to serve, and it's going to be good for a while, but then we may find ourselves eh, not functioning super great just because it isn't our natural giftings in right. some way. So we'll, we'll get to that. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Just a little, little cross-platform yeah. tease. Yeah. No, it's, it's fun. We're having a lot of fun doing it. it it's like a, a tangible manifestation of this podcast. Yes, exactly. A little bit more organization for the people that need that. Yes, that is true. That is true. We don't wing this. I mean, there, there's, right. there's guidance, we, but also... We have notes. Yeah, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's, they're Vegas. They're vague. They're right. not Vegas. They're vagueness. Yeah. <laughs> this is really just water, I promise you. Uh, good times. All right. So on this idea of service, you're right. Sometimes we don't know where mm -hmm. to serve or how to serve. It then seems like, that it feels like there's far too many ways that we can fall off on sure. this, right? Yeah. I don't know how to serve, I don't know where to serve, I don't know who to serve, and so I can't, I'm mm -hmm. not. We get past all of those, right? and now the next thing is the way that we go about serving, the way that we offer ourselves into mm -hmm. our service. And the analogy here that has proven very helpful for me as a recovering person, who likes to overfunction and work and work and work and give and give and give and you know look at my calendar and go man look how busy I am look that's what I accomplished awesome. my outlook calendar was full right yeah. this last year has been rough <laughs> <laughs> for all of us <laughs> for everybody's outlook calendar but if, if we use this analogy of reservoirs mm -hmm. and canals right and when we say canal, we're not talking like a Suez Canal that right, is right. perpetually water-filled, but we're mm -hmm. talking more like those storm culverts. Yeah, exactly. For those of you who are envisioning Greece of a certain age or a younger age, what, what was it? Uh, not gone in 60 seconds. We've gone, gone in 60, in 60 seconds. seconds. They had those. They have a lot of them in Los Angeles. That's what yeah. we're talking about, right? Yeah. And so if you think about how those two things engage with water, okay, right? A reservoir gets filled and filled and filled and filled until it overflows out of its abundance. Right, And a storm culvert is designed to, as soon as it receives water, move it away. Right, And so the, the storm culvert stays more or less perpetually dry if everything mm -hmm. is working the way that it's supposed to. And a reservoir stays more or less full if everything's working the way that it's supposed to. And I heard somebody use this illustration as an example of how we many times engage service, mm -hmm. maybe unknowingly that the way that we're designed to engage in service is very much the way that Jesus did, mm -hmm. right? Jesus serves from a place of overflow. Jesus goes away in the morning. He spends time with God, right? He gets filled. He's filled with the Spirit perpetually, right? Yeah. He, he's rested. He takes naps in boats, mm -hmm. right? He, he takes care of himself. And yet so often many of us, I feel like, I certainly did fall victim to serving like a storm culvert. As soon as I feel like I've got a little bit of energy, a little bit of, you know, being filled up from God, I'm out and I'm trying to give it to others because mm -hmm. I'm trying to do a good thing and go serve. Yeah. And the caution that was given uh, comes from a 12th century saint, Bernard of Clairvaux. Yeah. And he says, the man who is wise, therefore, will see his life as more like a reservoir than a canal. The canal simultaneously pours out what it receives. The reservoir retains the water till it is filled, then discharges the overflow without loss to itself. Mm. So as we talk about this idea of service, again, the whole purpose of this platform, practical application, how yeah. do we do it? If we figure out who to serve, where to serve, what's my gifting, how do we then avoid the trap of serving like a storm culvert yeah. and draining ourselves dry and learn how to serve like a reservoir where we're being filled and giving from the overflow. Well, as I was reflecting on this in my own life, I think if I'm normal, that's a big relative <laughs> statement, but I think I'm normal in this way, that we as individuals have a tendency to fixate on a few things mm -hmm. when it comes to, especially when it comes to spiritual disciplines and spiritual development, right? So um, we have had in the past, we will again, another cross-platform promotion, have this thing called Rooted. Mm -hmm. Right. And rooted is something that we're helping everyone in our church understand that that there are seven rhythms yes. of life. Right. And service is one of those rhythms. Mm -hmm. But there are six others. Right. They're not meant to be. like I'm only going to use this rhythm or this rhythm or this rhythm. Right. right. But to be the well-rounded follower of Jesus Christ, to wind up being like Jesus, mm -hmm. not just liking Jesus in this way, as we talk in this series, we need to be people who are engaging in all seven of those rhythms. Right. And so I think one of the ways that we wind up being more 
uh, like a canal instead of a reservoir is we become fixated, we become excited, we become, uh, you know, we become adrenaline junkies. Here's what I mean by yeah. that, right? Um, we had a gathering uh, here this week at church that we were able to serve in an amazing way. And I'm not going to get into what it was, but it was just an amazing opportunity. I was exhausted when it was done, right. um, but it was such an amazing, like we got a chance to serve people and show Jesus. And it was amazing, right? That I, I don't always feel that exact same way when some of the other rhythms that I try to practice, right? And so in that, what we have to be careful of is finding ourselves focusing only a singular part of our spiritual development, mm -hmm. you know, only taking the service part out of Sunday and moving into Monday through Saturday and not some of the other things that we're talking right. about. Because just like you said, Jesus gave an example of rest, yep. you know, and when he was in the boat. And if there's anyone who should have been able to say, I should not rest, Probably Jesus could have said, because he wasn't just thinking he wasn't the Savior. He was the Savior of the world, like we like to right. think. He was the Savior of the world. So I think for me, as I was thinking about that, that's one of the ways that it happens for me. I become fixated on a singular aspect, as good as it may be, maybe even an adrenaline junkie around yep. um, some of this. Yeah. Some people might connect with that. I don't know. Yeah. Well, and, and you're right, because I feel like there's so many ways to fall off on this. Mm -hmm. Right? We can fall off on the side of... The, the storm culvert, the canal, let me just give and give and serve and serve and drain myself dry mm -hmm. out of the noblest of intentions. Yeah. And we can fall off on the other side of, oh, so you're telling me I shouldn't do anything unless I'm full to the brim. And so what I'm hearing is spiritual permission to check out for like the next six to 12 months yeah. until I know that I'm full so that I can be a good reservoir. And Again, we have this propensity, I think, to, to veer to extremes rather than trying to find this narrow road that Jesus talks about. And service is an area where we fall into that trap. And I think that's a really interesting point that you bring up because in my experience, I've rarely met someone who has gone down that road that at the end of the six months, they think they're as full as they're supposed to be. Right. So six turns into 12 yep. and 12 turns into 18. And what we wind up doing is, I mentioned on Sunday, we would create this sort of fantasy idea that I'll serve when I'm ready. Yep. And ready, in most people's minds, is usually something that Jesus doesn't need us to be. Mm -hmm. He needs us to listen and obey, right. and he'll equip along the way. Yep. It, you know, Jesus knows what he's doing when he's calling us to serve. So when Jesus called the disciples, or when Jesus, when we studied in this book, when he called Matthew a, a uh, tax collector to follow him, when we're in this series, right? People are like, well, hold on a second. There's nothing about Matthew that was ready to yep. serve. You're exactly right. Yep. And so I, I think you're bringing up this really good temptation, too, that we can go overboard on the other end and say, okay, mm -hmm. I can't serve at all until all my ducks in a row or I have every bit of energy I'm ever going to have. And that's why we have to constantly, the thing we keep going back practically, the most practical thing that we say over and over and over again is go to God. Yep. Every day, God, what do you have to say about this? What would you want me to do? And and go from there. And some days he's going to say rest. Some days he's going to yeah. say something different. Yeah. yeah. It was so helpful for me when I first learned this because the way that I came into ministry, you talked about those seven rhythms that we cover in Rooted, service being one of them. Prayer and breaking strongholds were two others. Yeah. And that was really where I first entered into ministry as far as serving went, mm -hmm. right? Because I, I quickly learned how to, and I had some gifting in, and I certainly had a passion for helping people pray in a way that brings about change and transformation. Yes. That helps them find freedom from strongholds. And that's exhilarating, by the way. Oh, it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's Talk about adrenaline. Yeah. When you see God do crazy stuff in somebody's life. Every day, I want to do that. Seriously. Every moment, yeah. And that was the trap that I fell into, mm. right? I was willing to sacrifice my schedule for the good of other people, right? right? Just fill up the calendar, get an email, get a phone call. You bet I can squeeze you in. No problem. Back to back sessions. I can handle that. Yes. <laughs> Probably just, just push through, just push yeah. through. And I had somebody very kindly tell me at one point in the words of Jesus, John, the poor you will always have. Yeah. And it was just this incredibly convicting moment of, I'm draining myself dry. Yeah. I am trying to give what I no longer have. The water has long since run down the canal mm -hmm. and I am bone dry and I'm still trying to give. And at that point, I'm no good to anybody. Yeah. 
Uh, and I, I think, you know, that's an interesting section of scripture, right? When mm -hmm. in that particular point, when Jesus is saying that, he's not saying that people in need aren't important. Right. He's saying that there will always be people in need. Yeah. Do not neglect Jesus yes. in the midst of paying attention to the people in need because yeah. they have to go together. Yeah. And it's crazy that that can happen, right? We can start out yeah. doing things in a way that is being like Jesus then eventually we're doing it for Jesus, and then we're doing Jesus things for ourselves. Yeah, yeah, but that that's probably a whole nother whole nother podcast, <laughs> right? Part two. We'll Part be two. Back. That's yeah. right. But for now, I don't know. Any other tips on serving? Again, practical application. How do we help people avoid some pitfalls that you've seen over the years? Well, you know, we've hit we've hit th the main three, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Number one, um, this idea of over serving in that way by just not refilling. Or number yeah. two, thinking you have to be completely ready. And then we've hit the third one from this idea that lots of times what we discover is we serve. And, and I want to be want to be very clear about this. There are times when we need to serve outside of our gifting because it needs to be done. It needs to be done. Absolutely. Right? We need people, for example, it, on a church gathering. We, yeah. we need people on Sunday mornings to do certain things, right? And and that helps things occur. Now, that isn't the church that the body's a church, not a service. Mm -hmm. We know that. But there are times where you've got to do stuff out of there. But I think when you consistently attempt to serve in a way that you are not gifted to the detriment of the areas that you yeah. are gifted in, what you're doing, number one, is you're going to drain yourself and you're going to wind up quitting, I think. And number two, you are also in a, in a kind of not knowingly way, but someone's kind of saying that, that Jesus, you didn't know what you're doing yeah. when you said I'm to do this. And so, but I think a lot of times that comes from people who don't really have taken the time to invest. How has God made me? Yeah. That sort of thing. And that again, cross-platform promotion, that's one of the things we're doing in square one because yeah. we here at the church understand people want to serve. People want to make a difference for the, for the kingdom. And we want to come alongside of them and help them under, understand how has God made you to make that biggest difference. So those, those are the three for me as I think yeah. about it. Yeah. And I love that last piece because when you do serve in the area of your gifting, again, it still requires something of you. Yes. But the difference between how I feel at the end of serving in the nursery, mm -hmm. which I love little babies, yeah. they're, they're adorable, but I am drained. Mm-hmm at the end of you know the, the, the times that I've, I've stepped in to help out because it sure. needs to be done. Yeah. But the way that I feel at the end of teaching a class, because that's, that's my wiring. I'm, yeah. I'm a teacher through and through. I'm still drained, but it's that this was like the best hour of my life. Not really. But, you know, it feels that good mm -hmm. that I'm tired, but it was totally worth it. And you can even take that a little bit farther, I think, if you want, and use the teaching gift, for mm -hmm. example. Um, there are some groups of people and some elements and some environments where if I'm teaching and I love to teach that I leave tired, but I'm just, oh, this is amazing. Yep. But then there are other where it's work for me yep. because I don't, I don't like, you know, um, I, I love teenagers. My wife is a high school teacher, mm -hmm. right? She connects with high school students. I love high school students, but I realize I don't naturally connect. They listen to me. They respect me. They're yeah. mostly, I think, they're kind to me, but I don't actually. So I had this happen the other day. Um, Mike Haynes, he's, uh, he co-directs our um, ministries to teens with mm -hmm. your wife, yep. Brooke Ackerman, right? And he's also on our teaching team. And uh, the other day we came home after Mike was teaching one Sunday and my daughter, who's 14, was just talking about how much she got out of Mike teaching. And I looked at her and I said, you like listening to Mike more than you like listening to me, don't you? And she kind of sheepishly went, well, yeah, Dad, I do. And I'm like, good, you right, should. Right. Yeah. Because that is his wheelhouse, right? That is, that is where he, he just excels, and I, and I don't. And so it even goes so far as saying you could be using that gifting, but you need to understand, God, how and where yes. do you want me to use this gifting? Exactly. Yeah, but again, podcast number three. Podcast we can go number that, three. Right? We're creating a series here. Exactly. All right, so let's get back to the, the thing that we teased mm -hmm. at the beginning. When you do start to serve out of your gifting, which the disciples certainly got to experience a little bit. Yes. And they then have these moments of not only wild success, but incredible internal satisfaction that leads then to 
probably the inevitable conversation of what's my payoff. Yeah. Because as much as we all like to be intrinsically motivated, mm-hmm. there is certainly this desire for whether it's recognition or profit or whatever that is. Mm-hmm. And that seems to be part of the tension that was in this conversation in Mark 9 that your Sunday message was about. And we wanted to come back around to it because you didn't get all the time that you wanted in the Sunday message to talk about this idea of greatness. So we're going to start with just this question. Right. Is it a problem to want to be great in God's kingdom? Absolutely. Fundamentally, no. It is not. Fantastic. Say more. I I would just say this. We, when I mentioned earlier on, we allow culture sometimes to dictate to us what Scripture says and we look at it wrong. We have experienced people, we've all experienced people, we've probably all been this type of person whose desire for greatness has been corrupted or his desire for greatness has been misguided so that the definition of greatness has been a definition that Jesus doesn't give. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, I can look to the sky and I can call it purple. But that doesn't make it true, even though I call it purple. What happens with us a lot of times is we take words like greatness Mm -hmm. and we look at it through a cultural definition and we go, well, that can't be right because you're saying something that is, you know, it's this and it can't be this. I'm not explaining Mm -hmm. it super well, but there are other examples like that, like the emotion of anger. When God talked about having righteous anger, how many of us have actually experienced righteous anger towards us or towards others, right? (laughs) So sometimes we think anger can't be good. God is a jealous God. Now, how many times have we experienced jealousy in a proper way? Very, very few. And so we, again, in that experience, begin to think that can't be so. The same thing with people who strive to be great. Because Mm -hmm. too often, greatness in our culture winds up being, I'm willing to step over you to get to my goal. And when God talks about greatness, when Jesus talked about greatness, it's impossible to step over you to get to my goal of greatness because you are intrinsically connected to this idea of greatness because I'm called to serve you. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's key. And the other thing, because, you know, we always joke and say, hey, make sure you you listen to the sermon before. And we're hoping people do. But we also realize there's lots of us like I've done this before. I've listened to the podcast where it says to go do this first. And I don't do it. I'm like, I'll get to it. Right. We need to understand also about the disciples that I don't think they were trying to be jerks when they're having this conversation about greatness. Sure. Because we could look at them and say, well, Jesus just talked about dying. And your first question is, do I get his corner office? Right. That's what it comes across as. And I use an illustration like that on Sunday. Imagine, you know, being um, diagnosed with COVID, which isn't hard for a lot of people to imagine. But it's so bad that you lose your dream job. You tell everyone you're losing your dream job at work and they go, great. Can I have your office? That's really what we're, what, how we look at that. Right. And there is some of that. But the important thing is to understand their culture in that day. They were at the lowest end of rank. And rank was a big deal. That's how they did everything there in Roman culture and in Jewish culture. Mm-hmm. And now they're with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he's talking about all kinds of stuff. And they're with the guy. And so immediately their thought is, our rank is changing. How cool mm-hmm. is that? Right. And there is some awesomeness to that. But, and here's the key. He was saying, look, when you think about greatness, you may think this is how you're going to get there. But if greatness is what you want and there's not a thing wrong with it, this is how you get there. And so Jesus kind of sits down. I love that picture. He sits down. That's the position that teaches says, Come on, boys, gather around. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a teaching moment. And, And of course, he did a phenomenal job as Jesus would. As he would. Yeah. Yeah. I I like that that reorientation because I feel like so often there's the temptation to believe that you shouldn't want to be great. That, sure. that Jesus abhors the desire to be great. Yeah. And and nothing nothing is further from the truth. And, Absolutely. You know, Scripture sent, spends so much time. Jesus spends a fair amount of time talking about reward. Mm-hmm. Right. And he talks about the coming kingdom and the renewal of all things, and that there is recognition, there is honor, there is glory. There, mm-hmm. right. Greatness is okay. Right. Greatness is more than okay. Mm-hmm. But how we go about it, how we think of it, the yeah. path that we take to pursue it, it needs some readjusting. And I still appreciate this. There's there's the parallel passage in Luke where Jesus has much the same conversation. And he actually has three conversations in succession. And I heard a pastor preach on this and was just struck by, again, that same sort of reorientation. Right. So if you go to Luke 9, it starts with verse 46, which is the exact same conversation. Mm-hmm brings the child in front of them, you know, those who desire to be great, 
you know, you're not going to get it, but if you choose to be the least, right. you'll be among the greatest. But then immediately after, there's same theme, new story, where the disciples are out and they see, they, they come back to Jesus and they say, Master, we saw someone using your name to cast out demons, but we told them to stop because they're not in our group. <laughs> you're not in the in club. Yeah. Right, which again, you know, it, it's so logical, right? We have our team, we have jerseys, mm-hmm. we, you know, we're always together. And so if you're not part of the team, you must, you must be an outsider. You must be bad. Right, which is very much what that culture, what like that culture was very, very group focused, right? Mm-hmm. And and Jesus doesn't correct. He doesn't correct their desire to. I don't know. He doesn't have a problem with greatness. Yeah. Right, but it's the way that they're thinking about it, and so Jesus just responds and says, "Don't stop them. Anyone who is not against you is for you." Right. And it's this this reorientation of you're, you're after something good, but we just we need to twist this a little bit, mm-hmm. right? And then there's this third conversation. They go into a Samaritan village. The people aren't very welcoming. James and John, the aptly named Sons of Thunder, get together and they they come to Jesus and they're like, "Look, we've already got this planned. We think you're on board. We wanted to double check. We're going to call down fire." <laughs> Yes. Right. And it begs yeah. this question, like, what had they already seen and experienced that led them to believe, one, this was possible, two, they sure. could do it, yeah, and three, that Jesus would be on board? Right. And again, he, I feel like if I walked into your office mm-hmm. and said, Brian, I just got an email that was meant for you that wasn't very kind, and so I'm going to go blow up somebody's house. Yes. You're okay with that, right? It depends on what day you catch me. No, no, I'm not okay with it. But I can be tempted sometimes, right? But it feels like I, any reasonable person would expect you to fire me and then probably also call the police. Sure, yes. Right? And instead, Jesus, depending on the version that you're looking at, there's a follow-on verse where he says, you just you don't realize what your hearts are like. Yeah. For the Son of Man has not come to destroy people's lives but to save them. You know, he's I, I love your zeal. We just need to tweak this a little bit. Yeah. Right? I love that you're 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 worried about the purity of this message when you see other people casting out demons, but if they're on the same team, mm-hmm. this is a good thing. This is something to be celebrated, right? Yeah. He doesn't seem to have a problem with people wanting to expand their giftings. Mm-hmm. He doesn't seem to have a problem with people wanting to do more, but he's so willing to just well, it, it goes back to this, I think, temptation that we have as, as non, you know, as, as non-Jesus people. Mm-hmm. So let me explain what I mean by that. We are Jesus people, yeah. but we're not Jesus. Right? We represent Jesus. We want to be like him. Mm-hmm. And in being like him sometimes, we get this all twisted because we think we should demand perfection, mm-hmm. especially when that. And Jesus... When someone does something off, especially if they're trying to do it for him, you never see him shame them, but you see him reframe, reframe, readjust. I feel like, you know, it's kind of a little bit when you get your GPS off. It's like recalculating, <laughs> recalculating. I'm still going to get you there. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't exactly the way we planned, but I'm still God, and you're in the right place. I'm going to move you. And we, we, get re- we get really scared of messing up. Yeah. We get really scared of messing up. Now, it doesn't mean we want to go out and intentionally mess up. But I think we can let that fear of messing up keep us from serving. Like somehow the God of the universe mm-hmm. who's asked us to serve, if we're serving from the right heart in you know, pursuing greatness the way he wants it to be pursued, that if we mess up, that somehow he can't fix that. I mean, he right. spoke the world into existence. I think he can, he can do that. And in those moments when we don't serve because of that fear, I think way more times it has to do with issues in our own heart yeah. or it has to do with issues the enemy wants to try to whisper into our lives. Absolutely. And again, so many ways we fall off. We, we fall off on the, I want to get better. I want to get bigger. I want to get stronger. I want to do more. And we sure. fall off on the, I'm terrified of making a mistake. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to. Yes. Right. And it seems like the invitation from Jesus is, I want growth. I want to see the expansion of your gifting. I want to see the expansion of your passion. Mm-hmm. I want to see the expansion of your reach, your influence, your ability to represent me. Mm-hmm. And I'm okay with the fact that you're going to make some mistakes. Right. And that's the difference, right? 
He's not saying go make mistakes. Right. What he's saying is, is don't be living in fear of making mistakes that keeps you from stepping forward. Right. And I think that's a very real thing that a lot of us have when it comes to moving our faith yeah. forward, when it comes to living out our giftings. It, we live in this world where like we make a mistake, as I mentioned last Sunday, we make a mistake mm-hmm. in the first reactions that people try to punish us. Yeah. And that's not how Jesus works. Right. And so it feels like, again, with the goal of this platform being practical application, Mm -hmm. one of the things that we have to start to come to terms with is being honest about some of our internal wiring. Yeah. Right? Because we all have a propensity to fall off on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. And the more that we can become aware of those places in us Mm -hmm. and why we are that way, I feel like there's there's greater opportunity to find freedom from those things yeah. to then have greater freedom to go and serve out of the truest expressions of who we are and experience that healthy growth and expansion mm-hmm. and greatness the way that Jesus intended it. So if we use sort of the the mentality that you used in the message on Sunday, you know, some of us come to service, come to serving with this corner office mentality, mm-hmm. right? What kinds of things seem to be driving that, that maybe we can become more aware of in ourselves and hopefully find freedom from? Yeah, I think, so the idea of the corner office mentality is its position. Mm-hmm. And, and usually when the corner office mentality comes in, even through serving, it's we're getting our identity from something other than Jesus. Mm-hmm. Maybe we're getting our identity from service. Maybe we're getting our identity from a word that someone else spoke into your life that maybe may not be true. I I remember earlier on um, when I was getting into the ministry, and I remember several, several people, I think well-intentioned, spoke something into my life that they believed that this was going to be my ministerial future. Sure. It might still be. I don't know. But I knew because of that somehow that I began to look towards what they said and if I wasn't fulfilling that instead of just whatever Jesus says in that Mm -hmm. moment and I you know so I have to move it has to be bigger it has to be better it has to be that so I think there's there's part of that corner office mentality that could come from there and I also think that we can never stop and forget about basic ways that God has put our personalities together which are even um, a little bit different than our giftings yeah. Because you can have different personalities applying to the same giftings. Absolutely. And how we're wired in our personalities is created by God. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's not a thing wrong with that. And um, in my family, we have uh, four distinct personalities. If we take uh, several different, you know, sort of uh, evaluations mm-hmm. that you could talk about. This is, you know, I'm this, I'm this, this. And I've got, you know, my personality is the, I am going to be the driven and if I'm not careful, have a, a bad version of the corner office mentality, right? Right, or have a good version, because there is a part that says where hey, God has put you in a position of influence from this perspective to accomplish certain things, and that's not a bad thing if that's where God has you, right? Um, and so I think those are some of the corner office temptations that even come in me to say, hey, this actually is in some ways kind of how I'm wired, how God may be. Yeah. Now I have people in my family, on the other hand, are just you know, the other side, maybe I'm getting ahead of us a little bit, but the, the flip side is this, I want to serve, 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 anything I can do, anything I can do, anything I can do. And if they're not careful, mm-hmm. it could be a doormat mentality, Absolutely. right? Now, I will say this, from a just one-on-one, one-on-two, care about you needs, they are so much more like Jesus than I am. They just <laughs> are. And I think that's how God's made them. Yeah. Right. And, and God moves the kingdom through them differently than he moves the kingdom through me if I'm working mm-hmm. correctly and if they're working correctly. However, that's that's the catch, right? Yeah. If if they start to get their identity from any place other than what Jesus says and people just, oh, man, I need you, I need you, I need you, then they wind up being a doormat. They wind up getting being taken advantage of and eventually then they get burned out and they, yeah. you know. And so... Um, I think there's a lot of those different temptations that that come into our life. And ultimately, if we begin to get any sort of, uh, what I would like to say, expectations on our service, other than we're just doing it for Jesus to mm-hmm. people, there'll be a problem. Because I actually said this you know, on Sunday, true greatness is absent of expectation. Yeah. It's absent of expectation. It's serving others, however God has wired you and made you to do. And 
it doesn't mean that people are going to go, thank you. Right. It doesn't mean that people go, that's the greatest ever. It just means we're doing what Jesus asked. Yeah. In fact, that was the key thing. When he was talking about the child scenario, there's two parts to it. The first part was a child doesn't have a lot of pride, mm-hmm. right? So serve like that without pride. But also a child could give nothing back. Right. They were in that culture. We missed that. A child was only valuable for what someday he or she might do. Mm-hmm. But at that point, they weren't very valuable. That's why that's why uh, people who were the lowest on the social rank, slaves, took care of children. Mm. You can't miss that. There was potential value in a child, but there was no current value in a child. And so when he was saying child, he's like, no, no, no. They can't do anything for you. Serve them. Serve them. And they don't have anything that they're trying to get when they serve. Be like them in the same way. There's so much power. Jesus, he's pretty awesome with how he uses word pictures. He's a good teacher. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think for me, so I, I've realized that that I, I have a little bit of both in me. I, I've had moments of the corner office mentality yep. with the way that I want to serve. And I've had moments with the doormat. And so on the corner office side, I, I've realized, you know, there were some control issues. Or as you so often say, it's not control issues, it's a sin issue that manifests itself in control. Yes, and I say that for those who haven't heard me say that about (laughs) me predominantly, not others, but it's true in other people as well. And and so that's been something, you know, self-sufficiency, control, like I'm going to serve, but I'm going to serve my way. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus, you you better not mess with my cheese. Yeah. Right? Because I want to get what I want out of it and I want to do it the way that I want and I want to serve the people that I want to serve and don't you dare ask me to serve people that I don't want to serve. Mm -hmm. And it sounds so ugly when you say it out loud, but you almost don't realize that some of that is in there until you're able to verbalize it. And then, you know, on the the doormat side, so often I, I found myself saying, yeah, sure, I'll help, no problem. You know, trying to be the nice guy, mm-hmm. but really it was dealing with rejection. Yeah. Right. I didn't want to say no mm-hmm. and then have to deal with whatever relational repercussions there might be. Yeah. Right. I, I didn't want to have to deal with how people might think of me. Sure. You know, being thought poorly of yeah. is something that I've really had to work on over the years. Yeah. And I would love to say that from a place of nearing finality with mm-hmm. it. And it's probably not even really close. But yeah. like, you know, all of those are things that affected my ability to serve effectively Mm -hmm. because as much as I wanted to serve and give and love people out of my gifting and my passion and and the trueness of who I am, there were definitely some things sort of behind the curtain on both ends of that spectrum of I either want to do this my way yeah, or I'll just, I'll do whatever because I just, I want to be liked and I Mm -hmm. I want to be appreciated. And since the outcome from the serving is pretty much in question, yeah. Then at least maybe if I can have some, you know, here's where they cross over. If I can have some control over how people respond to me, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe this will make it a little bit safer. And I think, you know, taking this practical thing again, Mm -hmm. I think there's, there's some things maybe we all can think about in our life where that might show up. We've had a conversation. You don't struggle with this. I would, but we've had a conversation around your pickup truck here before. Yep. And I've jokingly said, how many people ask you in Northern Virginia to help you move because you want a pickup truck? Yep. And you don't mind that, yeah. the moving part. We talked about that. We both hate the packing part when oh, we show up. I hate that. I yeah. hate that part. But see, I would actually struggle with that. If mm-hmm. I physically owned a truck and someone said, hey, Brian, can you help me move? Mm-hmm. There are things on the list that I prefer less <laughs> than moving. But like it's like root canal type things. Sure. It's not a lot. But there would be a part of me in me that was like, Oh, I just need to do it. I need to do it. I need to do it. Yeah. And there's the interesting balance for me. We're like, no, I need to get out of my comfort zone. But also just because this always happens, I don't need to be a doormat. Because as yeah. you're right, at that moment, I'll be way more concerned about what people ask than whether or not God wanted me to do it. Exactly. Which backs up to yep. the first question is, God, do you want me to buy a truck? Mm-hmm. Number two, if you said, yes, buy a truck. And someone says, hey, could you help me move? God, do you want me to help him move? Yeah. Not what do I want to do, yeah. right? And I know that even though I hate to move and that sort of stuff, if he says yes, mm-hmm. there's something that he that he wants to accomplish. Yeah. And so I just bring that up because I think people can think in their own lives some really practical things. Mm-hmm. You know, I brought the truck up as an example, which, which would show my struggle over doormat or yeah. whatever it might be. I bet we all have them somewhere. We, we can bring them up. Yeah. All right, so pop quiz. You have a truck. Yes. Camping or help somebody move? Ooh. <laughs> 
Wow. Can I, can I get, can I get <laughs> D, none of the above. D, none of the above. Way to choose self-care, my friend. Yeah, out of the above. Yes, everyone who knows me, when they invite me camping, they talk about you know all the beautiful stuff that you wake up and see in the lake, and I'm just like walk halfway around that lake, and uh-huh. someone's built a cabin thinking the same thing. It's yeah. true. It's true. So as we wrap up this session, again, hopefully, as always, the goal is that this has been helpful. That we've not just been able to expand on you know, a good Sunday message, frankly, but how do I begin to live it out in a way that is uniquely personal to me? Mm -hmm. How do I benefit from the experience of people that are also walking this journey Mm -hmm. alongside me? And, and so hopefully there, there's an invitation here, right? You, you are meant to serve. Mm -hmm. You are meant to represent Jesus to the people around you in a way that frankly, nobody else can Mm -hmm. because of the way that God made you with your particular giftings, your particular passions, your particular personality. You will be able to be Jesus to the people around you in ways that I can't and you can't. Yeah, and one of the things that really the the title of this podcast really comes in handy right now is moving your faith forward is, it's said on on Sunday, and I just want to reiterate this as we close. If you listen to this podcast or you listen to Sunday or whatever it might be, and you're like, ah, I get it up here, but don't actually do it, true greatness cannot be achieved just through mental, you know, ascension to yeah. the idea that I need to be served, that I need to be serving. Rather, it has to be done. To so be. to move your faith forward in this scenario doesn't mean I just know more. You have to actually do some of this. Yeah. 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 So as you go and do, hopefully it's been helpful. Yeah. Self-care. Become more like a reservoir than a storm culvert. That's right. Be okay with greatness and be okay with greatness separate from outcome Mm -hmm. and expectation. Yes. But be okay with the fact that as you serve from the truth of who you are to those around you, there is reward. Yeah. There is recognition. Not always the way that we want it. Not always when we want it. Not always how we want it. But there is reward. And it is good to want to serve well and meaningfully. So... Another conversation I've enjoyed having. Yeah, thanks. And we enjoy hearing from you too. We, I think we got like our third email. We did. Yeah, yeah faith up. forward, right? <laughs> if you want to talk to us about some of the things we've been talking about or maybe even make some recommendations some things we can talk about, even yeah. though most of this podcast was based around our Sunday gatherings, we're still plenty of things you know we've talked about that we still can talk about. Absolutely. You can send us an email at faithforward at cfcwire.org. Yeah. John will get it or I'll get it and uh, we'll get back to you. That's the plan at least. So until next time, I'll see y'all later.